last one that we did was called And Then You Were Gone, and that was a very serious, somber, mono record for Literally us. in Literally mono. Literally in mono. Um, and so this one is very much an antithesis of that. We really enjoy what we do, and we enjoy playing music, and so, so much of these songs are about having fun, having a good time. We uh, tried to synthesize the purest form of rock and excitement and audio joy that we could find and so that's what that's what we're working with it's a very um it's a very fun take on what we do it's kind of something we've never really tapped into completely in our music that we had in our live show um but we've also got a song on here that we um we have we played at our very first show and we've never recorded it because it's never really fit with what we were doing um it was always a little too happy and a little too meaningless almost but uh really fit and uh we really want it to be a summer record we want people to put it in in their car and enjoy driving to the beach while listening to it yeah cool and it's very sexy it is very sexy it's very we try to be sexy from a technical standpoint the recording process isn't that much different for when we do it for other people um as far as the equipment that we use um we use, I have a mobile production setup, you might say, so it's like a studio's worth of equipment, but it's modular so I can take it places and set up, and, and that's still big what we words. do. <laughs> I do use big words. Um, that's still what we do for our recording, um, but as far as the kind of way that we come at it, we really don't make our music for anyone but ourselves. So it's a much more narcissistic experience because, I mean, with other people, there's there's this balance between we kind of try to marry what we want for their music with um, with what they want. We very much want to capture their vision, but we want to kind of come alongside them and form them so it's a more, let's say, complete vision than just a, just a very narrow exactly what they want. But with us, it's just us, so it's just what we want all the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I would, I would definitely say th the biggest difference for me is that, like, with our stuff, there's no politics. We really just do whatever it is we want to do. The last EP was in mono because we had never done it. And so when you're recording another band, you kind of have to talk through with them what is the project, what is the best thing about it. With us, it's kind of like we did our Sabotage Me EP, and we felt like we really captured the rock sound that we were doing at that time. And rather than make another record just like that, we said, let's make a all-piano-based mono record and see what that's like. And so um, that's really the biggest difference. We can just do whatever. For me, the producing role stays the same because I still work with Colin and Jesse as a producer, just like I do with the restoration. So for me, a lot of it stays the same. I am more involved in the songwriting, but it's pretty similar. We started as a band that was very spread out, and uh, that worked in our advantage a lot of ways. We were able to get to a lot of different cities and play for a lot of different people. But um, even though most of that time we only had a member in Columbia and we don't have a member there anymore, we still felt like Columbia's home because I lived here for a number of years. I've known Daniel Machado since the second grade. And uh, we hooked up when our band was just kind of getting started and he helped us get one of our first gigs. And uh, since then we played with Guitar Show a bunch and uh, when he went to the restoration stuff, we um, kind of went with them, playing with them, even though the styles didn't match up quite as well. Um, and so it's been a really, it's been a great experience, um, you know, as far as working with them and staying connected to Columbia has always been really important to me. And I've worked with David at CNSC. And uh, so we kind of, we have a lot of connection here and we just really enjoy working with these guys. I have a lot of, I have a lot of belief in Daniel's vision, especially when he sits down to write these records, and um, enjoy working with him through that. And so Colin is a bit more, he kind of came in um, with my urging, so perspective is going to be a little a little more interesting. Yeah, uh, well I met Daniel when we were touring. Uh, basically he gave us like our second show, our first show in Columbia, New Brooklyn, so that's where I first met Daniel, but our friendship was forged in the fire of unfortunate events. He actually came up and I think this was the repayment show for that first show that he gave us here. He came up to Anderson and 
his tire went flat and he could not get his tire <laughs> off and it led to a two to three day saga of him attempting to do that because it happened over the weekend and the nuts were apparently on so tight that no one could get them off and so there was a, a butane torch that we got at one point in the Walmart parking lot and we sat there for several hours attempting to melt the nuts off I think there was some scientific reason behind that but eventually we got Danny where he needed to go and after that we've just we've been pretty close um, the first record that they did uh, when I was in graduate school uh, for audio recording um, I needed a project for my thesis project and I really wanted to record Daniel and we got it worked out and so he uh, we were able to work it out so I did a lot of traveling down here but still with all the modular stuff we did some of the record in Nashville um, at some studios there and then apparently we did a good enough job on Constance that when they came around the second time they wanted to work with us again. My advice for young people is to uh, stay humble and work with people who have been doing this for a while before. Do not if you can at all not fall prey to the songwriter curse, which is what I call it, which is where you really think that you know everything and that everything that you think is really the way it should be, it's just not true. Get together with other people who've been doing it for a while and as much as possible do what they say. If it's somebody that you respect, then you should really just do whatever they tell you to do. If you're not sure about it, then okay, but somebody with more experience, somebody who knows what they're doing, who's done this before, who's written songs that you like, um, or recorded things that you like and, and and follow them. That's the best advice I can give. Do it because you love doing it. That's really the only way to to really tap into what your potential is as a, mu as a musician. If you just do it because you want to make money or get girls or whatever, eventually that's going to run up and you might not have anything left. Um, and I, in my day job, I get to talk to musicians a lot who do this and actually make money, and they all say that. So even the people who actually make a living doing this, they say, do it because you really enjoy doing it. And if you have that, then you can go off and really achieve a lot of things. But if you don't have that, eventually it's just gonna run out on you. I've discovered more and more probably in the last couple of years how much I love doing this. Whether it be recording, or songwriting, or performing, or any of that stuff, it, it, it's an intangible. There's really not words to express exactly that sense of fulfillment and satisfaction in writing a great song, in playing a great live show, or in recording a great album. For me, um, it really, it, certainly all of that is very true. Um, Jesse, who isn't here, um, Holland and I have known him. He's he's younger. He just graduated college. Um, and we've known him and see him grow up as a musician and uh, even that a little has really kept us going just to see what all he's going to do next um, but really it's the friendship for me um, the last record we put out which was extremely personal for all of us really encapsulated a lot of that that we all went through we all went through things that were different but had a very similar um, kind of just process to them and so to put all that in music even though we don't live in the same state and we don't see each other all that often still really there's a lot of it was about our friendship and so we um that's really a lot of the value in it for me and that's kind of why we've kept the fire tonight going um to make the art and because we're good friends and we enjoy doing it i really i just want people to get our music and enjoy it i mean we throw it up there for free and let people pay what they want because we want we want people to take it and enjoy listening to it. Um, it's really, it's very simple, I guess. I don't, yeah. you know, I have deep philosophy about that. I just want people to hear it and enjoy it. And if they don't, that's okay. You know, Colin has kind of a strange voice. We don't want to do things, we don't do things in a <laughs> pop sense. I mean that the best way possible. I know. But we, we're not, you know, we're not pop musicians. We're not out there to sound like we're going to be on the radio. So, um, you know, if someone enjoys it, if it, gets them through something tough then that's you know that's really what we're in it for there you go answering my questions before i ask oh. you again <laughs> get 